Hey, welcome back. Uh, so we're going to look at arrays and specifically how we can use range variables uh, to affect uh, sequential, sequential calculations or building an array uh, for different uses. Uh, so this is not dissimilar to some of the work that we did with matrices. And of course, I'll put a link up here uh, to the uh, matrix video uh, if that's specifically what you're looking for. But this is more generic. How do we manage uh, matrices and how do we do so using uh, range variables. So uh, a basic array, uh, and we're going to limit ourselves to considering uh, one and two dimensional arrays, is really any ordered set of numbers. And so what we're going to look at, one dimensional column matrices or two dimensional, which would be you know, your basic flat sheet uh, two dimensional matrix. Um, so to get started, I'm just going to create a column matrix here so that we have something to work for. And so we go C is equal to, uh, by definition, and then we're going to go up to matrices and tables, insert matrix, and in this case, we're just going to do a five by one. So I'm just going to create a uh, random set of numbers here uh, using my tab button to move between the various cells. And there we go. So nothing uh, of any real import. A one dimensional array uh, is going to have a single index, which indicates the uh, element order within that array. And so then we can access it. So I'm going to make sure that I'm uh, here. You know, remember left to right, top to bottom and all that. Uh, so we're going to go C and I want to choose the third element. And so if I use my left bracket key, which gives us access to the indices, and we do that here. So it's different than a standard subscript. Uh, and now I can put in the uh, index and I hit my equals and I get two. Now you may be looking at this and you're going, oh, I, I, I don't really understand. Why is it giving me two? Why isn't it giving me three? Well, of course, it's all based on what your origin is set at. And by default in MathCAD, the origin is set at zero. So the uh, order or the numbering of the elements starts at zero and goes on from that. And so, of course, we went to three. So zero, one, two, three, that's the fourth one down. So we didn't get the third one down. We got the fourth one down. Now, you can choose to change the origin if you choose. And there's a couple different ways that you can do that. So the first way that you can uh, choose to change that is to do it globally for your entire calculation sheet. And so we go up here to Math Formatting tab and, oh, maybe not Math, oh, sorry, Calculation tab, my, my error. And we see up here we have origin is equal to zero and it gives you an option. We can have it at zero or we can have one. So if we change it to one, you see we get a different return. It starts numbering at one, one, two, three. So we're at the third one and we get the value that we kind of expected because I think starting at one makes a lot of sense for me. Uh, but I know different disciplines have different ways of doing this and a lot of them start at zero. So that's one way to do it. Let me switch that back. And the other way to do it is to do it explicitly on your sheet. And this is actually the way that I prefer because it means that somebody looking at your calculation sheet will know immediately what your origin is and can make sense of it rather than having to look back up at the top and try to find what the origin is. And the way to do that is to use the origin function. And by typing it in, you see it changes to a function uh, label when we hit our equal sign and we can set that equal to one. Now you notice this didn't change. This is still using an origin of two because of that top to bottom, left to right order of precedence. But if we were to do C3 again down here and we hit equals, you'll see we'll get the different value because from where the origin function exists from then on down, uh, the origin is now equal to one. So that's your, your simple uh, one-dimensional array. So let's do up a, a quick uh, two-dimensional array. So I'm just going to create a matrix. We'll do definition, go up to matrices and tables. And in this case, I'm just going to do a four by four. And here, let me fill that out and I'll get right back to you. So. So 
So there we go. We have our, our matrix then up, so a two-dimensional array. And of course, because it's two-dimensional, it has two indices. So it has I and J, if you want to think of them that way, uh, one representing uh, the row and one representing uh, the column. And so again, we can draw the numbers from the uh, uh, individual elements by using those indices. So if we look at M using our left bracket button again. In this case, we need to give it two indices and we hit our equal sign. Oh, look, I need to be on the same line. Uh, otherwise, M was undefined. So M23 and we get minus 13. So does that make sense to us? So two is the um, uh, row index. So one goes down one, two. Remember our origin is still set at one because of this function up here, one, two and we're three over on the column index, and so we get to minus 13, and you see that works out purely logical, and that's a very powerful tool to be able to both take out and input different uh, elements into the matrix. So let's show the reverse. So let's define an array by defining each of its individual uh, indices. So if I go, say, A1, and we define it as five, oh, sorry, and I'm just going to keep going over. Sorry, a2 uh, is equal to negative 2. We'll go over here again. And we'll go a3 is equal to, say, 14. And then if we look at our variable a, and we can see that we have inserted the three element values by using the indices. So we can go both ways into and out of uh, the array. So that's your basic array functionality. Uh, there's a lot you can do with it. Really, uh, it's only limited by your imagination and ability to logic your way through the various calculations. So let's close that up. And I wanted to talk a little bit about range variables. So range variables are they look like an array, but they're not an array. You, you can't uh, access the individual elements. Um, and they are defined as a sequence. So really it is a sequence. And so uh, I have it written up here on the screen. So we have first, next, last. And so that is uh, how you would define the range variable. And so the first range variable I'm going to do is I'm just going to increment by one and go from one to five. And so I'm going to go I uh, define it. And I'm going to go one and then dot, dot, and choose five. Now you say first, next, last. Well, the next, if you don't fill it out, is actually assumed to be one. And so that's what we're going to see here. And I'll, I'll do another example where we explicitly give the step increment. And so now if I go I equals, and we can see we have this range variable, one, two, three, four, five going down. I mentioned first, next, last. Let's use an explicit definition for the step. So I'm going to use Y in this case, and I'm just going to go from zero. I'm going to use a step, and so I'm going to put in a comma of 0 0.1, and I'm going to finish at 0 0.4. And so by doing that, then I can go down here and I can say Y is equal to, and you can see how this range variable is generated. This is just the display of the range variable. It is fully defined after we uh, put it in up here. Okay, and just uh, to show you, uh, you know, it looks like an array, uh, smells like an array, but it is not an array. So if I were to use my uh, Y left bracket, left square bracket, and say I wanted to get the third element out of it, and I hit my equal sign, you see that it's not a vector. Uh, and so it's not able to return a value uh, for y sub 3. So why do we have these? Why do we have these range variables? Well, range variables are hugely useful both in generating arrays that meet certain patterns or stuff like that, and, but also for uh, controlling uh, sequential calculations where we want to use a bunch of different steps or refer to different components of, of calculations. And I'll show you a quick example when we're done. But let's uh, do a couple uh, simple things here first uh, to get us started. Um, okay, uh, so I'm going to, using my i range variable, I'm going to generate an array called x at i. And so I'm going to go x at i define it, 
and I'm just going to say its elements are equal to i times 2. And so what this is going to do is it's going to calculate a value for x sub i uh, for each value of i in the range variable. Okay, so if I uh, wanted to go x equals, and I will see the array that is generated as a result of that calculation. Let's just do something a little bit more uh, complicated. I'm going to do my y sub i, define it, and in this case I'm going to do 2 times i, and then I'll add to that, and I'm going to choose a square root uh, function, sorry, m. There we go. X. And let's raise that to a power of 3. And have a look and see what y is equal to now. And we get our values there. Now, as you can tell, because we've used the range variable as input into generating our arrays, these are functional arrays, and so we can use our um, elements y3 equal to, and we can pull the values out individually. Where, you know, like I say, there's a lot of places where you can use them, useful in generating uh, different uh, sets of values that you may want, uh, also for controlling successive or incremental calculations. So I'm just going to open up a, a sheet here, and I'll just show you an example of where I've used it and why I used it in the way I did. So just give me a second, I'll open up that sheet. Okay, so I, I've just uh, opened up a, a problem sheet here where we are looking at uh, beam stresses. And uh, you can see the calculations there. But what I wanted to show you here is on the second part, of course, when you start looking at beam stresses, you need to know your cross-sectional properties. And so in this case, it's an I-beam. And in calculating the uh, moment of inertia, for example, or to really <laughs> any of the properties, uh, one of the easiest way to, ways to do that is to break this section up into uh, simple sections or simple uh, areas that we recognize. So here I've, you see I've broken it up into three rectangular areas, one, two, three, and I've set up my range variable i uh, equal to one to three. Uh, using an origin equals one, and I'm able to do my calculations for calculating what the height of the um, uh, neutral axis is or, or the uh, centroid is uh, by uh, successive calculations on each of those areas because they have known uh, distances to their own uh, independent centroid, which is uh, determined by symmetry. And we can go on down and we can go ahead and calculate it. And of course, we ultimately end up calculating the moment of inertia for each of the rectangles themselves, but then using the parallel axis theorem uh, to come up with the moment of inertia for the cross section itself. So you might ask, well, why not just substitute in all of the variables in there to get the calculation directly and of course absolutely we can do that now the value in doing it this way is that's the way the equation looks in the theory so in looking at the sheet any engineer looking at this sheet is going to look and says oh okay he's this person who, who did up this calculation is using the uh, parallel axis theorem to calculate the moment of inertia of the compound section. And I sub I we know is the moment of inertia of the ind individual uh, areas. And A is the area of the individual areas. D is the distances then from the centroid to the individual area centroid. Okay, it's easily understandable. And so it actually cleans it up a lot uh, and makes it easier. It is a little bit more, um, uh, I guess, complicated in its logic uh, for application, uh, you know, to, to come up with the algorithm that does it. But the reality is it's actually simpler in its layout because it's exactly how you would do it, laying it out by hand to start with something that is hugely recognizable and then get the calculation from it. So lots of power. You can use range variables for a lot of things. Uh, but what I wanted to do is kind of introduce you to the idea uh, because you're going to be seeing it. You're going to be seeing it in all sorts of uh, interesting and uh, complex calculations. So hopefully that was uh, useful to you and uh, good luck with that.